Hey, how's it going? For this video, we're going to work on finding the signs of different trigonometric functions using a wonderful, neat little tool uh, that I picked up when I was in school. All right, so you may have seen this before, maybe not, but this is actually a great way that you can easily memorize uh, whether something like sine or cosine should be positive or negative. That's what I mean by the signs of the trigonometric functions. So let's learn this real quick um, and see exactly what information it gives us. So when you're doing different uh, trigonometric functions like sine of 23 degrees, uh, you get a number and the idea is, is this thing going to be positive or negative? And the clue to really figure out, well, is it positive or negative, is depending on where that angle ends up. Is it in quadrant 1, quadrant 2, quadrant 3, or quadrant 4? Uh, if you know what quadrant it's going to be in, then you can easily figure out what the sign is going to be. Now, these letters here tell you which trig trigonometric functions are going to be positive or negative. For example, if my angle ends up in this first quadrant, then all the trigonometric functions are going to be positive. So if I'm dealing with sine of 23 degrees, sure enough, that's in the first quadrant. Oh, I know that's going to be a positive value. When I get over here to quadrant number two, then I know that sine and its reciprocal are going to be positive. Well, what about the rest? What about tangent and cosine? Those will be negative. So these are telling me what values or what trigonometric functions are going to be positive. So sine and its reciprocal, which you know what, we'll go ahead and write out. Uh, cosecant will also be the other positive one. All right, moving on. Who's going to be positive in the third quadrant? Well, t, we only have one trigonometric function that starts with t. That's our tangent. And if you want to rem remember, cotangent is the other one. So tangent and its reciprocal. And in the last one, uh, who gets to be positive over here? Cosine and its reciprocal function, secant. So now that you know which functions will be positive in which quadrant, um, how can you remember this really quickly? Well, a great mnemonic for this is to remember that all students take calculus. And you mark them off in the order of the quadrants. So quadrant one is all, quadrant two is students, quadrant three is take, and quadrant four is our calculus, so all students take calculus. And now you know which trigonometric functions are associated with them. Now let's take this one step further and actually try an example now that we have this uh, wonderful little thing down. And just to help us out, I'm gonna draw this in the corner which is something you can do if you're taking a quick test or something, you know, quickly sketch this out. So all students take calculus. We'll use that to help us figure out what's going on. So the goal with this uh, problem here is to figure out what quadrant our angle has ended up in. And the only thing we know is a little bit about the sine of the functions. So I know that uh, if I plug my angle into sine, it's negative. And if I plug my angle into tangent, it turns out to be positive. So where did that angle go? Well, if I know that sine is negative, then I immediately can rule out the first and second quadrant because in the first quadrant, everyone's positive, and in the second quadrant, uh, sine is positive. And I specifically know it's negative, so it's gotta be on this lower half here. I'm gonna shade that in. So, so far our angle has to be down here somewhere. Now, the next bit of information is that tangent is positive. So let's see, where's tangent positive? Well, it's positive in the first quadrant, and it's positive in the third quadrant. So two bits, so it could be here, or it could be down here. Now there's only one quadrant where both of these things are happening, and sure enough, that is quadrant number three. So what quadrant is my angle in? I can say theta is in quadrant three. So this really gives you information or a little hint about that angle. Let's do it again. So this time cosine is negative and cosecant is positive. So co cosine is negative. Uh, so that rules out those two. I need where it's negative. So I know that it has to be over on this side, somewhere over here. So that cosine is negative. Uh, cosecant 
greater than zero. Now I have to be careful. This is, stands for uh, all trigonometric functions, sine, tangent, and cosine. Uh, where's, where's cosecant? Is cosecant up here? You also have to remember that these apply to their reciprocal identities. So cosecant is the reciprocal of sine. So cosecant of the angle is equal to one over sine of the angle. So I'm going to use, so it has to have the same sign as sine of the angle. So where is sine positive? Sine is positive up on the upper half here. So let's shade in the upper half. All right, now just like before, there's only one place where both of these conditions happen simultaneously. And now I know where my angle is. Theta is in quadrant number two. So, you know, don't be afraid to write this on your piece of paper if you need a quick reference. Um, and it really gives you a lot of intuition on the, the, the sign that these trigonometric functions should have. All right? If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.